Uh, greetings and welcome that. to the Games Only Podcast, episode 180-something. 183! 183. 183. I knew you guys would cover for me. I'm Sunflower, and I'm here with my friends. Uh, we've only got two of the three companions. Amigos. Our, our, uh, I knew you liked Doctor Who. Yes. quad musketeers. <laughs> only two companions. Only two instead of three, because normally we have three companions. Yeah, so I'm the I'm, I'm the blonde, and then HP's my boyfriend that I don't really like, but I tag him along anyway, right? Yes. Because the Christopher, the, cause the, the Christopher Eccleston um, Doctor Who was the best ones. Um, Isn't Doctor Who for children? It's for everybody. It's for you and for me. Well. H, HP, do a real intro for us. Uh, well, we've already started, so, yep, all of what Sonny said, then there's me. <laughs> you actually have, you actually have to introduce us. He just introduced the two amigos, and then you were like Dr. Oh, that's Who, right. and then there was that. The two amigos. Okay. Uh, our resident Dr. Who, uh, Whovian. I'd, I'd like it if we'd stop talking about Dr. Who. I'm not even a real Whovian, because I said Christopher Eccleston's the best Dr. Who, and everybody would probably, like, stab me in the neck for saying that. But well, Leather Jacket, le- 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 Leather Jacket, really, the best. It's Dr. Gumar. <laughs> and the man who can break up your relationship from 3,000 miles away, it's Sunflower. No Netflix, I'm podcasting. <laughs> That's only funny to me. Let's it was talk- like, like 1,500 miles away. It's not quite 3,000. I 3, felt 000. pretty bad. I felt pretty bad. Basically, yeah, I she's, asked she's fine. She's just sitting over there grading papers now. You're oh. making her work. Oh, wow. That sounds terrible. Yeah, it really is. It's the worst part of the job. I'm a bad man. <laughs> so, shut, what's sh- up? Sh- shut your mouth. Would you guys like to talk about some kiddo games, or do you want I'd to I'd like to me? talk about some video games now, and I would like to start with the pre- standalone prequel to the game that was two of the four hosts' game of the year last year. We can call it award-winning, because it can. won an award. <laughs> That's yes. right. On the back of the digital box, yeah. two, 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 two hundred award <laughs> awards won because everybody and their mother thinks they're journalists. We'll say it won a legitimate award. But what game are you talking about, HP? I'm talking about Wolfen, Wolfenstein: The Old Blood. Wolfenstein. Uh, it's Frankenstein. Uh, from Fra- Fra- Frankenstein: The Old Blood. Um, Oldest of all bloods. Sunny, I think you've gotten a little more time with it. Have I you been playing on the? Xbox One or the PC? I did. I bought it on the bone. Um, for some reason, that just kind of felt right, which is dumb, like stupid reasoning. Um, but yep. especially considering I played it first on PC, but uh, I wanted to sit in my chair. That's the you same know? exact thing I did with with Blood Dragon. Even though I bought Far Cry Three on the PC, for some reason, I'm like Blood Dragon has to be a 360 game, and I just bought it on the 360. So just feels right on that yeah, dated hardware. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Old Blood, yeah, 20 bucks. That's all this game is, which I like this, the fact that they put a lot of time into the normal Wolfenstein game, and then, you know, hey, we'll just keep using it and make more stuff, because uh, this game doesn't do anything different compared to the other one. It is more shooting on Nazis. Who doesn't love that? And uh, really, that's Uh, what I want. eh. Uh, It's a prequel. So it's 1942, as opposed to, I think, 44 is when you started in um, the New Order. The New Order. Yeah. yeah, I think it was 44 or 45, but who cares? Basically, it gives you an excuse to be the same character, to go back to a castle. Hey, we're actually at Castle Wolfenstein. That's cool. Um, one of my favorite it's... parts from the first game was when you did go into their castle that they had for about 30 minutes. So this is a game around that castle, which is cool. Yeah, it, it's um, it's beautiful. The uh, you actually you take one of those um, like ski lift uh, trolley things. Gondolas. You know? 
Yes, you take a gondola up to the castle. So as this... And then a, then a James Bond villain bites the cable. Yeah, then Jaws bites the cable. Close, um, close. But as, as the, the other <laughs> guy is... Is like that happen? No. No. Okay, uh, I keep saying close. The, as the other guy is expositioning to you, you get to stand there and go like, this is a giant castle. I can... it, it The sense of scale is ginormous. That's um, something I really like about video games that they can do is they can make these huge... Impo- these things can't exist in real life, but it's it works in that universe. Like every castle in Castlevania. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the Castlevania castle. I don't know. So, um, uh huh. More about how you feel, HP. Uh, this almost right away, I was like, yeah, this feels like that game I played and liked. I'm happy to be playing and liking more of this game now. Certainly. Um, and we should... Oh, that's the thing that I wanted to mention. I've been tweeting all day from the Games Only cast account. Um, right now, you can buy this game and the original game for $30 at various retailers. Uh, I haven't looked into exactly how to do it, but that that information is online everywhere. So this standalone thing is $20, and you can get the last year's game for 10 um, so just look around because that deal is out there and that would be totally worth your money. To Those get are good deals in. too because um, lots of people kind of miss games and then when a new one's coming out, it's kind of like when Assassin's Creed 3 came out, should I play the other two? Yeah, you probably should. So this is a good way to make sure that you've got everything you need because they didn't put out any DLC for the new order. There was no multiplayer. It's just enjoy. So, yeah. Yeah, and I didn't feel like it needed multiplayer or anything. Well, yeah, the, the original didn't have any multiplayer, and I remember that, right? Correct. And I appreciated it for that, because it was obvious that all the focus was on a very good story um, that was very fun to play. So, it pays off. Yeah, and, and sex sex on a train. It's, it's sex on a train, and, uh, you know, uh, tense situations and unbelievable environments... Uh, that were just a lot of fun to run around and shoot and slide, shoot two guns at once. Um, Yeah. Uh, So far, the only new thing about this game is um, you're given a pipe right off the bat that kind of works like your knife. Yes. Uh, But it it also allows your character to climb certain walls, um, so they've kind of added uh, a minor gameplay element. It doesn't come up very often, but um, you use the the triggers to kind of use hand over hand as you climb up. Wow. Um, yeah, it's it, it's it's satisfying, and if you don't do it right, you will fall, as I learned the very first time, because I was just like, ah... Every triggers all the time. Just all keep the triggers. Yeah, like, that this, is, this, work. Is, this is a shooting game. This is all I do. Right, yeah. right. I should go left trigger, right trigger, right trigger, right trigger, right. That's that's video games. Um, yeah. Uh, so so far, that's pretty much the only addition. I'll give air quotes to the word addition that I've come across. Sonny, is there anything that I miss? I, I think there's a new enemy type because there are enemies that are like tethered to... Yeah. There are some uh, super soldiers that you need to shoot electrical pieces on them to stun them and then you tear off their chest plate and shoot them in the heart. Things like that. So Nothing crazy. I mean, it's, these aren't complicated mechanics. It's just, oh, here's someone that you have to not shoot in the head for a while. Yeah. It, and it's refreshing enough and it's different enough from the regular game that I'm like, okay, this is different. This is new. Yeah. Um, and yeah, right away I, I'm getting the same feeling that I got from last year's game and I really enjoyed last year's game. Heck yeah, you uh, did. Um, I'm excited. It's kind of weird though. It does a bit more uh, stealth than the first one. Um, you can always gun your way through situations, but it's not like a fail state if you fuck up. Sometimes you can just get away from the enemy and then redo it, you know, come back to it. Uh, it kind of drags the beginning of the game down kind of slowly at the beginning, but uh, it's really not very bad. Um, I have very few complaints about it because it's good. 
Yeah, me too. Uh, I, I think I played most of the Wolfenstein The New Order it kind of stealthily. I played it more stealthily than maybe I should have. Um, so I kind of feel right at home right now. That's because you were checking all them corners. Where no Gotta check were. your corners. Gotta find all them collectibles. Uh, oh, yeah. man, are they actually balls? We have to make a game where you use collectibles. They're collectibles. Not. They are uh, stacks of gold. Stacks of gold and Nazi, letters. Nazi gold. Nice. And other things that I can't think of. Stacks of gold. Uh, they also have, like in the previous game, if you go to bed on any bed that you find, you go into an old level of the Wolfenstein game, 3D. Oh. Which is just... It's adorable. It's such just, a just... thing. One uh, other thing that they've added with this game uh, this time, to give it more replayability, because honestly, uh, it doesn't have much with the previous game, because you can just go through the story again. Um, but you get challenge arenas, which is basically kill a shitload of dudes. Get points. Good enough, right? Yeah. Because, you know, the best part about Wolfenstein is that it's fun to play. It's fun to shoot guns and kill people. And that's the whole focus of what this game's about is, is it fun to kill people and is it fun to look at things like crazy Nazi magic? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Nazi magic? I'm in. Because, you know, there's just a Yeah, little... it's a lot of Nazi magic. It really is. So well, this is a, this is a Indiana Jones movie, is that what you're telling me? Kind all, you do is, all you do is kill Nazis and find magic. There, there's a lot of Indiana Jones um, feel that you would get from this, but uh, the game is split into two distinct stories. Um, the first four chapters are your infiltration into Castle Wolfenstein, and the second set of chapters has to do with you being in a German village, which I'm sure that will get real ugly. I finished the entire Castle Wolfenstein part, so I'm in the village now. Um, I'm halfway through, and it's wow. taken me about four hours. So for 20 bucks, you're getting about eight hours. Probably, I mean, assuming that the second half of the game is around the same time as the right. first. Sure. Um, but it's kind of cool because you do get a very, very clear end uh, with the main antagonist for the first half of the story. So I imagine any minute now I'm going to be introduced to the uh, antagonist for the second half, which is kind of nice. It's not like Far Cry 3 where, oh, this guy, I thought he was the bad... Uh, I guess he's gone. You know, it's it's very clear and it feels episodic, which is cool. I like it. Awesome. And I can't wait to play more. Good. Uh, yeah, that's Wolfenstein. The blood you old... Can, I don't know how to say that. Blood Dragon. You can call me Igor. I can what, what? You can call me Igor. I'm I'm not exactly sure where we're transitioning to. No, what you, you like it wrong? Said, is it hey? Every single time I say we'll finish scene, I'm like Frankenstein. Yeah. Okay. Frankenstein. Roll, roll, roll in the hay. Hey. Roll, roll, roll. Uh, HP, what cigarette? cigarette? What? Did you say cigarette? <laughs> cigarette. <laughs> hey, blanket, hold the reins. Ziggurat. Ziggurat. I've been wanting to play Ziggurat for a long time. Tell me about this, because I, I wanted it, and then it was on sale, and I didn't buy it, because I'm an idiot. It was it was on sale, and I, I finally dipped in. Okay, stop me if you've heard this before. Oh, the Smiths. What? Oh, that's a Smiths song. Sorry. <laughs> Damn hip. I, I wouldn't uh, Anyway. Anyway, uh, first-person shooter. Cool, you love those. Roguelike. Ooh, sounds good. Uh, what else? Um, Create a character basketball game. <laughs> oh man, what? they are missing out. <laughs> they could get, and toys to life. That would be the <laughs> no, 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 quadfecta. No. <laughs> toys to life. Um, so <laughs> Brett Favre is on the cover. I mean. Hey. <laughs> Um, so you start off with a, it, it is a fantasy game, and it reminds me a little bit of Tower of Guns, uh, only insofar as, like, um, it's a roguelike first-person shooter. Um, but you start off with a magic wand, and then you're given one of three other sets, uh, yep, like that, a magic wand, and with basically unlimited ammo, it, it refill, the ammo refills, um, 
over time. Each and each weapon has a primary and a secondary fire. So the primary fire is like a it's a pea shooter. It's really terrible. The secondary fire is like if you were to shoot peas out of a shotgun. So it's like, just like this oh, like comes at you, right? Right. Just push uh, peas, pea soup. Pea. Um, and then Sport pea soup. Then uh, you are given. Right off the bat, you're given one of three different categories of guns. Well, one is like spells. One is kind of tech, uh, which can include um, a handgun that's kind of like a cannon uh, and grenades. Uh, and then the third one is uh, staff, uh, which kind of shoots like a machine gun-ish. Um, but, but the weapon you're given and kind of which... Uh, which of the three weapon types it falls into is random. So every time you start uh, at the very beginning of the first level, you'll get your second weapon. Um, so the the different types of weapons have... Uh, it's not really ammo. It's it's like a gem. It's a collect... It's something you collect from oh. killing enemies. Well, no way um, you like this. I think you can call it ammo. That sounds like okay. ammo. Well, it it, is, it manifests itself in, in kind of the form of a gem in in the world. Okay, so do you need to pick up more to shoot things? Yeah. It just sounds like ammo. Okay, yeah, it's, it's ammo, man. Okay. A rose um, by any other name. Okay, fine. So there's... Uh, Twice as sharp. You know, each, each of those weapon types has its own ammo. You can't have more of, than one of the specific weapon type. So if you have the... Uh, ice spell, for instance, and then you pick up the fire spell, you can only have ice or fire as your kind of spell book weapon. You can't have both. Um, so there is there is a, a little bit of um, you know strategy involved in the weapon types, but honestly, I haven't gotten far enough to have... I think I've only had a full complement of weapons once. Um, so the... Each level, each floor is randomly generated, as far as I can tell. Uh, the layout is, for sure. You have to find a... Um, it's like a... I don't know what it is. It looks like a book. You have to find this thing in the environment. It's in one of the rooms. The cigarette? Uh, <laughs> yes. You have to find a cigarette in the environment. Oh, cigarette? Ziggurat. You have to find this cigarette in the environment... Uh, in one of the rooms, and then you bring it to the boss room, and it unlocks the level boss. So you don't have to clear every room on the floor so long as you find this kind of uh, tome and bring it to the boss room. So um, it keeps you, um, basically taunts you with, hey, you want to keep exploring? You could get some good shit, or you can just yes, going. Yes. Most good games do that. Good robot. Yeah. They have that balance between the two. I know that uh, Dungeon of the Endless was horrible about that. Oh my god, they tempted me. Uh, and and so the other mechanic is um, you, you gain experience uh, for for kills. So you eventually level your character up, and as you level your character up, you are you you have the ability to unlock uh, various. Um, Abilities, I guess. And Upgrades the for the ability. The ability to unlock abilities um, that, that kind of manifest themselves as cards, and so some of them will have you know one in the corner because it's a level one card, but you can get the card again, and it will obviously be a level <laughs> two. The but, cardigan. The cardigan. Oh, the spooky cardigan. I oh, the, zig the ziggurat cardigan. The ziggurat cardigan. Perfect. I, Let's make them. It's it's argyle. And it looks like Argyle. It has nice buttons. Yeah. Um, so those those kind of upgrade cards, you get access to more of them as you play the game. Like when once you die, you unlock a few more of them. So your your deck of possible upgrades becomes larger, um, and it changes kind of the way that you play the game the next time through because you might get this new ability or you might even want to just try it out. Um, Again, and, like a good roguelike does. Yeah. Uh, you know, at, at least in, initially a lot of them are like, hey, have more health. Hey, have more of this type of ammo. Hey, have more of this type of ammo. Um, but there are some of them that are like um, 
this weapon type does more damage, but you have a quarter less health. Or this weapon shoots faster, but it does, you know, a third less damage or whatever. Have, so, have, you, have you ever been tempted to just die? That way you can get those new abilities access to? Like, this run's not going that great. Let's just go ahead and die. That way when I come back, I have access to these better abilities. Not really, because I, I still... I'm so curious about um, the, the enemy variety, because uh, I, I don't think I've... Uh, I don't think I've seen all the different enemy types yet. Um, there are definitely, like, skeletons throwing axes and floating ghost-looking things that shoot projectiles. And then there are carrots that look very angry. Um, <laughs> and so I'm like, I, I want to know, <laughs> know which way this game ends up going with its enemy types. Like, am I going to... Face. It's going. It's going omnidirectional. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. I know what it's all about. There's and then, there are like blobs and t that shoot projectiles and you know all sorts of different enemies. It's it's an interesting game and um, I I haven't gotten I haven't nearly scratched the surface of what it is. Um, but it's so it's here's what I think. Mm -hmm. Eventually, okay. you're going to go in the area where you're fighting the carrots, you're fighting the broccoli, and then the boss of that level is going to be some type of veggie mancer, right? He brings the dead veggies back to life. He's going to be. <laughs> Hold me on it, veggie mancer. Veggie mancer. He's, he's, a... like, he's going to have like a kale leaf as his cape. And, you know, he's a crisper. Drawer. <laughs> he's got in... a helmet of a crisper drawer. <laughs> Jesus in the refrigerator, and veggies just pop out of him. We need uh, to start making. And then now, now. Yes, yes, that's. You that guys would should be a like stuff making Remember, games. That'd be that'd be like for a Commander Keen game. So maybe if we start writing like old Commander Keens, we'd be able to get away with it. Oh my goodness. Um. So yeah. Uh. I think if if you tried something like Tower of Guns and you liked the idea of a first person shooting roguelike but you didn't necessarily be, like being restricted to one type of gun um, or leveling up that specific gun. If you wanted to have a, a little more in terms of the, I don't want to say RPG elements, but you know, in, in terms of leveling your character up and having each run be a lot, potentially a lot more different than uh, the previous run, uh, I think Ziggurat is kind of a more interesting game uh, than Tower of Guns was. Um, that being said, I hate the wand, and so you're, as far as I'm concerned, your your run is really contingent on, like, I gotta get a good starting weapon, I have to get a lot of this ammo, um, and hopefully the, the once I beat the first boss, I'll get a better second weapon so that I have two weapons that are worth anything. Right. Um, I see what you're saying. Yeah, but it is nice that you have a kind of unlimited ammo weapon with you all the time. Otherwise, you'd just be running around. Oh, and, and each um, each room, when you enter it, has kind of a, a an amount of enemies health bar kind of thing. So you kind of know, like, how many enemies you've cleared off. Because um, some, some of the, uh, the level, the, the room geography is, like, like three stories up, and like there's a valley below, and so you um, you think you killed them all until the veggie mancer brings them back. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There's no there's no health bar thing for the veggie mancer fight, um, <laughs> but it does. Come back up. <laughs> it does uh, the, do a nice the grape, job. The, of... the grapes you kill come back as raisins to kill you. I mean, you go, <laughs> this is gonna be awesome, right? <laughs> These guys. these guys. I, I killed all these plums. <laughs> now they're oh, prunes. prunes. Um, Jesus. The, the game does do a good job of showing kind of a red outline of enemies if they are obstructed by the geometry of the level. Um, so, so you can go find them if it's getting... Yeah, if, if you are way above them or they're way above you, it's easy to find them even if the the level is obstructing it. That's really nice because, uh, you know, you can tell that there are still enemies left. You have that bar. Um, yeah, so that's a nice touch. 
Uh, I can't really think of anything else to talk about. It was half off, I think, a week ago. Uh, I definitely think it was worth that price. I, I paid, I don't know, 7 or $8 for it. Um, and you got so, it on the bone or the... Uh, I got it on the PC. PC, okay. Um, gotcha. Yeah, on on Steam. Uh, I, I think your mileage will vary if this sounds like a game worth 15 but I'm really happy uh, that I got it when it was half off. Sounds really um, good to me. It sounds like something I should get. I think you'll have fun with it. I, I do. I, and then... It's different enough each time you go through it that you'll just be like, yeah, maybe I'll play one more and see how it's different. I know that feeling. HP, if you like the whole shooting with magic, um, Lich them Battle Mage would be down your down your alley for that. But it has it has too much RPG mechanics probably for you. It's, <laughs> I, it's weird. I'm a it's, very simple man. It's 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 like. They have uh-huh. these options for... Explain have, it slowly, because I'm have, very... They have the spells that you want, or that they can give to you, and then they have this insane create-your-own-spell thing that's just so damn convoluted, but I don't think it'll have the same results as making a garbage rain spell like in Two Worlds 2, <laughs> so, so Sunny, Sunny won't like it as much. Those so were great it, times. It has this just so heavy convoluted create your own spell thing that I think you just get lost in. I need to do all the permutations and see what happens before I decide what spell to use. Wow. And then you'll have a bigger beard and it might be gray. I don't need a bigger beard. Um, I agree. After all, they're full of fecal matter. <laughs> Did you read that heard. article too? Yep. Yeah. Uh, what am I talking about? Oh, yes. Uh I talked a little bit about Unepic a while ago. I yeah, I saw you play it on Child's Play stream once. Yeah. Um, and now, Doc, our resident indie game from weird places You're like an Unepic, experimental game uh, You're making me sound like, a, sound like a creeper, you know? This weird... He doesn't play games like everybody else plays, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just our, leave it at that. A resident pedo. Yeah. Uh, no. Oh no, that's that's Sunny. He's the one that's oh, playing. Oh, that's Neptunia, right. Neptunia, okay. Oh. Never touch Cyber Dimension Neptunia. Oh. Talked into that garbage never again. And that's why you're a pedo because you allowed somebody to talk you into that. You know what? This pedo game doesn't sound half bad. Let's go ahead and play it. <laughs> Any, you're, anyway. sick. you're right. You're right, friend. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Uh, Unepic uh, is kind of a Metroidvania style game with an, a quirky sense of humor, and I'm curious. I took, I took your advice and I played on English. <laughs> Yay! I'm like, because there's like a bunch of different languages. I'm just like, where's the good one that HP said? Where's the good one? Yeah, the there it is on English. One, and like, yeah. in the in the first cutscene, you don't really notice it, because the spelling's fine, and he's using words that actually exist in the English language, and, <laughs> you know, he's doing all that type of stuff, but uh, then all of a sudden, like, you just start looking at some longer sentences with some grammatical structures, and then you notice the main character ends every sentence with, like, Hein! And I'm just like, what the hell is he saying? Do we say that at the end of every sentence? Hein? You know? Uh-huh. <laughs> so, it's just like all of a sudden it kind of gets to you. It's like okay, this is. It's really interesting because it's, it's just grammatical. Like you could understand what the person's trying to say, but the more complicated the notion, the harder English grammar is to be able to connect properly, and it just goes completely wild in terms of how it is. Uh, but it's it's comical. It's like. This this evil sp- first you're taking a piss and then you go and all of a sudden you wake up in a dungeon so that's cool that's fine um, and then we've all been there yeah everybody's been there it's not that crazy you know too much LSD whatever you know, was actually going on um, and then this like evil spirit tries to possess you and he's like oh you have no soul to possess or whatever he actually says right you have no faith so I can't control you and then you're just like. I have this evil spirit in me. I'm just going to be a dick to him and like, oh, I'm not going to die. That way you're stuck in me and I don't die and then I just piss you off. And it's just it's just this funny little banter back and forth between there. Um, 
game's really cool in terms of how the setup is with the actual maps. There's uh, seems like there's this big hub area where you pray to the golden cube uh, that gives you health and saves your game, uh, and then you just kind of unlock doors through different parts. So the castle that will be back to that main hub area through like this convoluted MC Escher like like I go through the the door I'm like oh let's let's through this gate and then it's just like a wall of different gates just strewn about all over the place I'm just like yeah pretty sure this is the hub part of it so I'm just gonna go back and then explore the castle a little bit more uh, naturally as opposed to trying to go through the actual hubs but uh really cool game um did you you had I was about to say, did you play it on mouse and keyboard yeah hp you played it with a gamepad um <laughs> of course you did there's there's no option for you not to cuz you are hp um that sounds like me yeah so they have lots of different ways you can do hotkeys and map different hotkeys on there. I think you do like 12 different hotkeys on the actual gamepad, which works out really nicely. Um, so you can like do quick equip for different weapons because it's old school D&D style rules. You can't kill a skeleton very well with a sword because it's not going to bleed with a sharp weapon, so you had to hit, hit it with a blood weapon. Um, you know, those types of things. So you're able to like quickly queue up different uh different weapons if you need to with those. So it, it works really well. It's a, it's a cute game. If, if you catch it on sale, it's, it's definitely worth a play. Um, I don't know why HP didn't tell us to play this game at all. So uh, <laughs> You like how I always do that every single yeah, time you recommend yeah. a game and like a year later I decide to play it, right? Mm, I don't know what like, you guys are telling me, but you know, this Wolfenstein <laughs> game is pretty good, guys. You know? <laughs> You know you're right. I didn't. I didn't. I should have. I should yeah. have known that you would have enjoyed this game. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, I was just like, I wanted to play something light, um, and it looks like a, a lighter style game. Not too. I mean, there's there's some heavy. It's a Metroidvania game. There's some heavy mechanics, but it just has that light indie flair to it. That's okay to play. Um, that I'm just I'm just kind of biding my time until The Witcher Three and Axiom. Verge. Verge comes out at PC. That way I can get my Axiom Verge on. Um, but Sonny, did you put, did you buy that on the PS4 yet? No. You told me that's the only reason why you want to buy the PS4. And then no. you don't even buy the game. No, I didn't. Oh, I don't, I don't play, know her. Said you play no. Shitborn and Shit Son. You, you and, don't exist to me in this moment. And you, play, and you play Shit Club. You and you play all these other games. <laughs> but you don't play the one game, You the whole reason why you bought the system. <laughs> I don't know her. All right, yeah. So let's let's talk, Sonny, about your PlayStation Four and the games that you have been playing on it. Unless you want to stop, unless you want to take a time out and do Doc's top five. I love how you did the 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 college coach timeout. Yeah, real quick. this is because yep. this doesn't get timeout in college. No, like, no, no, you have to make it more blatant and go like this. Yeah, that way, it's like yeah, nobody's just going to tap their shoulders like this naturally. There has to be a timeout. Anyway, well, let's do Doc's top five. Let's do okay. it. All right. Doc, Sunny, Sunny, your five, my friend. Okay, so Sunny challenged me to my top five video game soundtracks, and then he tempted me this morning by talking about Dance Dance Revolution mixes. Not, not top five; it's a fave five. There's a it's big a, difference. Okay, um, yeah. So my top five for video because, games. Because your faves could never. But. This is the... Oh, you say my faves can never be top of anything. That's the idea. I mean, we agreed that six myth is six mix is the best mix for Dance Dance Revolution, right? I agree. We agree. I love six. I mean, I I did I did I did play a lot of eighth mix, which which is fine because it has like all the other mixes in there except for Bye Bye Baby Balloon. So that's why eighth mix is not the best. If it had Bye Bye Baby Balloon by default, it's like a best of. You know, it has everything you actually need. Um, but I decided not to go. Th- out in terms of music games, because of course they have soundtracks. That's like saying, uh, um, was it Dance Central is my favorite game because it has all my modern favorite pop songs to listen to. It's like, no, it's I'm looking for more um, original soundtracks. Uh, so this was tough, and I don't really think I picked anything that would be heavily considered this generation or even heavily considered the last generation. I think the... Oh my gosh, are you trying to say that the sound chips can't handle it? I don't... I don't... Yeah, I'm sorry. It's it's 16-bit or nothing, guys. You know, <laughs> no 120-bit soundtracks for me. Um, 
I don't think it's that. I think it's just that those older style games had like music at the forefront, where these newer games, a lot of them are so orchestrally styled that it's really a nice background accoutrement to um to what's actually happening. Like the Halo soundtrack, as amazing as the actual sounds in the Halo soundtrack, it's just so naturally fitting that it doesn't really stick out and like get in your head. Um, if that makes any sense, right? You're giving me the double the double thinker, so I don't know if that's a good thing sure. or a bad thing, right? right? Well, if it if a soundtrack fits and is natural, wouldn't that mean that it's an excellent it's, soundtrack? It's it's not it doesn't stand out, you know. You're looking for like your top five. It's the ones that you're like, yeah, I remember the soundtrack from that game, not like sure. Yeah, I remember this was suiting, suitable for the actual yeah, game. Yeah, I wanted to take you for a ride. Uh, exactly. Oh, man, Daytona. Oh, man. Uh, let's, let's, okay, forget the East Games. I'm just going to get to the USA, you know? Is your fan five not ready all of a sudden? <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden. No, it's like I had some ideas, and then I walked over to my, to my shelf, uh, and I'm just like, fuck, that game and that game are on my list. I have to quell two things off of this list. Um, so two games that actually got the cut. Um, Command & Conquer Red Alert uh, had a really, really slamming soundtrack. I still remember Hell March from that actual game and how that song goes. And that game was made in like 95 and it was a PC turn-based, um, not re PC real-time strategy. That was like this really niche thing. So that 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 was off the list, but that was that was a really cool soundtrack. But, so that's it, not your number five. No, that's not. That was honorable mention, and also just didn't make it as well as Mega Man 2, which is like, what the fuck was I thinking? Mega Man 2 is not on this actual list, but that's what I mean by, like, stand-out soundtracks, because you can be like, oh, this level is, is Metal Man, and this level is Flame Man, this guy's the Wood Man, and you can just pick out those actual songs just based off of that, because that's how iconically connected they are with the actual game. And I think that's because they were just 8-bit or 16-bit, and they were just, like, so intrusive good, but intrusive that they just stand out in that way. Um, so yeah, that one was out. Um, my number five pick is probably the most recent game, but I don't think I can consider it like in this generation. Um, it was To the Moon. Um, oh, yeah. Really, really nice soundtrack. I actually found a few of their sheets, and I, I can play it on the piano. Um, but it's, it's, it's one of those games where the the, the, the developer for the game is actually a musician, and I really think he just wanted to kind of create a game that tells a story that highlights his music. Um, so that's one of the reasons why... Um, God, what the hell is it? I know it's Freebird Studios, but I can't remember the actual name of the developer. Uh, you, you can work on that for me, but um, it's... It's that mentality that makes it actually stand out. Um, different scenes in which not a lot's going on, just kind of little bit of camera play, not a lot of action, no action at all, and just the thing. And it's, they, they he really hit it because it's the entire game is instrumental, mostly piano music, but completely instrumental until one actual particular moment, what you could call like the actual climax of the game, um, all of a sudden there's a there's a vocal a vocal song and it just kind of kind of hits you in that with a with that type of just change in there and you're like damn this is it just like tells the moment right there it's just really really well done um, can't you tell that this list is so much better than like the best Pokemon list because I'm not just like no, oh it's the not. Pikachu has a tail and he's so cute. That's a great reason to have Pikachu at number I, two. I think there's uh, a home for all of these lists. Free, I know. Freebird Games published and developed to the moon. So that Ooh, Ken yeah, Gao. Well, who's, like who's, the, who's, the, who's the developers? Because it's Ken, like two people. Ken, Ken Gao. Ken, Ken Gao. Yeah, Ken, Ken Gao. Yeah. Leonard okay. Skinner. <laughs> Leonard yeah. Skinner. Um, so, so number four beat out Mega Man 2 in terms of my like childhood memorable soundtrack and it, it's probably because it's just it's eight more bits than Mega Man 2 so it has just a little bit more depth to it but uh, Super Castlevania Castlevania 4 fucking baller soundtrack you know awesome soundtrack I can remember just the opening the opening scenes with the gate open like dun, 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 I'm just really really awesome you can just Listen to that soundtrack play. Uh, 
all day. So go hop on after you're done watching this, of course, hop on the YouTube's and just listen to that soundtrack. Really, really rocking, really fun game. Uh, Sonny, did, do you like the Castlevania Four soundtrack? Not really. Not well. <laughs> Because he's, he's, thinking, he's thinking he's like, yeah, but like Rondo of Blood has such a better sound because now he's in like Castlevania better. mode. And not just thinking about I I never played Rondo of Blood until like oh, later on, so that's why that's why it didn't really stick with me as much as uh because like I, I, the only Castlevania game I had growing up was Super Castlevania. Um, I didn't even have any of the NES games, so Super that's why. Is awesome though. That's why, yeah. That's why it's like that one is the one that sticks with me. It's really, really good soundtrack with that. Um, I have a game that you're you're gonna dig in terms of the actual soundtrack. My number three game. Um, I think I would classify this as one of the most modern soundtracks that I actually have on this. Um, Ooh, I hope it's Animal Crossing for the GameCube. No, it's not. Never owned a GameCube. Sorry. Um, the last uh, su- the last Nintendo console I owned happened to be the console that played Super Castlevania on it. <laughs> that gives you an idea. I've had like a DS, um, which I barely play. I don't count that as a console. It's a portable. Um, now it's a PS2 hit. Um, Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. Right. That had a weird soundtrack. It was good, but it was it's just like something not... different and strange. Yeah, it's like this really like dark metal music for an RPG, and like the, they have just different layers of actual um, of actual music, which is like the regular fight, just like normal guitar riff and people yelling, and then like mini boss fight, something different. Regular boss fight, something different. You're fighting one of like the uh, the the. Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, something completely different. You're fighting Dante in that game, something different. It has a really, really cool mix. And one of the nice things is that um, that game, when Atlas ported it over to the States, all of it came packaged with an actual CD, um, CD-ROM. We'll get proper for those kids who have never seen a CD-ROM before. A CD-ROM of the actual um, audio uh, soundtrack. So it's really, really cool. I still have it uh, on my actual shelf, the actual uh, the song. So it's a really, really good soundtrack. And I think it's Probably the most different one out of all the SMT games. Uh, they get a little cutesy here or there, and sometimes I think they um, they kind of push the envelope a little bit too much about cutesy. Like Persona 4 Golden, how they just had that music video in the beginning for absolutely no reason except because they can, you know, those styles. And it's things. awesome. It is all. I'm not going to deny it's awesome, but it's just like, oh, why are you going to do that? All right, Sonny, you didn't like that pick? It's all right. Okay, how about this one? The most quintessential Japanese-style soundtrack you can possibly get. DDR 5th nope. Final Fantasy, which nope. one? Nope, nope. Katamari Damacy. Oh, yeah! That's okay, good. really, I mean, like, people bought that game for two reasons. One, you rolled up garbage into a ball. Um, which is and awesome. two, that soundtrack was completely off the rocker. It was just... Insanely different from everything that was available at that time. Um, it's funny. The only reason why I actually played that game is because, for some reason, all because it was like 2002, I think, somewhere around there when it came yeah, out. It was a long time ago. All, all of my uh, all of my DDR friends, we were out to eat and they got wind that it was my birthday. So some one of my friends just pulls out the game. He's like, "Well, I bought this for me, but seeing as it's your birthday, here you go." I'm just like, "Thank you," and it was magical. So thank you, thank you, Kevin, aka the vicious nematode, because we all had dope ass tags for our DDR crew. So uh, really, really awesome soundtrack. Though. I thought you were so much cooler about ten seconds ago. Just the um, just the. <laughs> hey, I wasn't called the vicious nematode. All right, he he uh, self named himself. It could be worse. You could name yourself for a tag like HP seventeen oh three. That's and pretty like, good. It's some like inside thing that nobody gets but me. Right? But it's been so long since I made up the name that I forget completely forget what uh-huh and it rhymes stands for people stands for huge penis <laughs> and huge that's penis. it right? <laughs> um but yeah Katamari well, Damacy really really which cool which number soundtrack. are we which that number is that right? three that was number two, two. oh okay uh, All right, drum roll. But, but I'm just, just saying, like, they made different inter- iterations of Katamari. <laughs> Thank you. Different iterations of Katamari Damacy, but uh, 
and they tried to revamp that actual main theme, the best one was seen from the actual first one. Not like anything from We Love Katamari or any of the other ones. We Love Katamari was better, I thought. No, man. No, it had it had it had one good it was had like a jazzy style soundtrack, I think. But it's like the original theme the best one was from the from the original game. They just try to change it in every iteration was as good. Okay. Uh, the number one game I think, uh, in, uh, Final Fantasy anything. Um, Final Fantasy Final Fantasy Six is probably one of my favorite games of all time. It also has one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. Um Six. I was gonna say, are we done? Did Did you guys not hear me? Are we still doing drum rolls and <laughs> backwards Final symbol hints? Six. Final Fantasy Six. Anything Nobu Yamatsu actually makes is just like pure gold in terms of a soundtrack. But yeah, um, Final Fantasy Six, and I think it helps out that every single character had their own theme, and that game had like like 16 different main characters for the story. It was one of those stories where there was no main character, so you can like assemble your crew however you actually want to. Um, it might have, been, might have been 12. 12 main characters. Um, but so at the... And it's cool because the ending... I'm not going to tell you how it actually ends, but um, if... if nobody dies out of all the people, at the end they do a little... Um, vignette of like them escaping the ship and like their theme song plays for every single time um, that person comes out so you can hear each 12 individual theme songs all the way out I mean it's really really awesome I have the, the sheet music the sheet music book right over here for it I mean it's just a really really great soundtrack with a perfect game um, yeah number one soundtrack Final Fantasy 6 you right. took that super seriously well done doc Thank well, it's, well it's, done. It's fucking soundtracks, man. It's not no fucking Digimon shit that I have to pick out, right? Digimon I, was always yeah. the poor, more worthless version of Pokemon. It was, yeah, like, the, it was like the GoBots. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, the blocks, Duplos. Thank you, Duplos. Dupl oh man, fuck those They're Duplos. They're too big. <laughs> they don't fit on the other Legos. It's your bad. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's my, that's my top five. So I get to pick. I get to pick. Sonny needs to do one. Didn't I tell Sonny to do something last week, and then we decided to do this? Y yeah, it was like things that Make HP you loves that hmm. Sonny hates or something. No, that was somebody from the actual chat. Oh, okay. That one. I we think I wanted Sonny's top five Final Fantasy games just so he can piss off all the weeaboos. Even though no weeaboos actually watch this show, but in case they stumble upon it, <laughs> they don't know, anymore. Then they, then they can cringe and be like, "Sonny, yeah, he's a terrible person." Um, they should know that by now. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Mull it over in your head, and we'll revisit it before we go off. The mull air. it. Yeah, yeah, Ooh. but s s top five for Sonny for something. Sorry, Fav, Fav five because we want alliteration. Fav five. Uh, 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 all right, Sonny, you've been playing Drive Club. I saw a tweet. You didn't like it. It's off of Drive Club. I call it Shit Club because it's a piece of shit. Um, and you're very well, clever. Yes. Yeah, because <laughs> no one else thought of this. It's better than Drive Shit. I just that, searched that, for people. I just searched for shit club. <laughs> That's where my head is. I was about to say drive shit. People might actually buy that off of the novelty. Then I was thinking like shit club. There's probably a fetish person that would buy shit club as well. So let's I've not been to that. a shit club, man. You have yeah. gotta know uh -huh. all the same. Let me words. tell you something. One thing you don't want to do is do an image search for typical Mac user. Just don't do that. You will regret it if you do. It's pretty bad. Don't do it. I'm telling you guys not to do it. It's and happening all of you right now. At home, do not do I don't, this. I don't do trust you. I almost no, want to do this. And any no, time somebody says, How is bad it, can it be? Wait, wait. Is it, is it an How image search? How bad can it be? Oh, yeah, it's an image, image search. Image search. But don't do it. Cool. Don't do so it. So am I Googling? User. Oh, God. I told you not to do this. I told you not to do this. Don't do it. What are you seeing, Doc? Don't. Oh. Yeah, describe it. Describe oh. it for HP. It's horrible. I don't know oh. how they managed to get the SEO happening for that. Oh. What? Oh. Chris, Chris I feel, Walken is I feel, I feel like Chris oh. Walken. Oh. 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 He, oh. he puts the shit in his mouth. Oh. 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 God, really? Is that oh. what it is? 
It's yeah. kind of worse. It's kind of worse. Stop looking at it. We need to oh, talk about shit. I'm looking at all the other things. I'm looking at see what, what actually came in third place. Because <laughs> it's the top two images. And there's oh, something in third place. How the hell did that happen? Don't oh, do it, HP. I, I, I don't, don't want to. All right, good. So let's talk about uh, anyway. Drive. Let's talk about a video this is game. This something where you actually want to take some advice. Yeah, you actually want to take. Some I told you advice. not to. I don't know what more to say. And if you're at home, don't do it. I promise you. <laughs> Just like I mean, if you get the opportunity to play Drive Club, don't. Do to, it. to be fair, I could have been like eating dinner and saw that picture, and I would have been fine because I don't really like visualize things all too well in terms of like, oh, this could be. You could talk about feces while I'm eating, and this will bother me. Yeah, you could put feces in my food, and that won't bother That's me. That's a little or different. Or you can put it in your yeah. PS4 and call it Drive Club. <laughs> yeah, no, this, this is, uh, was Drive Club free? Is it? Is that was that a free game or? Uh, Drive Club is not free. Uh, I could have sworn they were toting it as free at oh, some point. Oh, they certainly were. They were saying right. that uh, on release it would be free on PS Plus as a stripped down version where you can play the whole thing, but you have to buy your own cars. And guess what? Uh, that was, God, what was, when was Drive Club's release? February? December of a year ago, wasn't it? Give was me it? a second. I have October 7th, 2014. Over oh, last year. It's, so, it, yeah. We're coming up on a year, like in a few months. <laughs> we're at, like, we're right at six there. months. It's at six months right now. No, no. So we're that's, coming up on a year. That's a few more months and then a couple more months after that and we're there. <laughs> it's been almost a decade. Yes. Anywho, uh, so, so what 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 is so bad about it? It's not fun to play. The problem okay. is the driving. Uh, there are great <laughs> things about it. Okay. Yeah, it. It's the first part of the name, that's and that's the, the problem. Part. The club stuff. The club's awesome. You go in yeah. there, you dance you, a little you bit. Dance, you, know, you gotta bad. shoot people real fast and run through. Strangely, the club part is a kind of shitty part of this game. Like it sounds like a good idea. It's like, oh, you get six people together and you challenge each other for things. But you know what? I played Horizon 2 and how easy that was to join a group. How easy that was to have people automatically on your friends list as part of your competitive scores to be able to send challenges, to have rivals. All that was integrated in the game very smoothly. This, it's not. Oh, you want to do a challenge? Well, pick something to do and then send the challenge manually to people that you know. That's... Okay. Okay. I it's it's got like this little glimmer of could have been something. But what buries it is that the game itself is not fun to play. Um, Thirty frames per second hurts, man. Like, you shut the fuck up, HP. You quit your smiling and Doc, stop uh, vomiting over there. I'm, when it comes I'm to really, driving I'm, games, it's important. You know, I, I I'm willing to great. admit in driving games. Yeah, yes. I can. Yeah, yeah especially driving games and fighting games. Especially because you're coming off of of Horizon Two. And that had a very smooth frame rate all the way through. And because it was hitting up those high numbers for frame rate, it actually felt fast. And, I mean, it's important because you see uh, Mario Kart on the Wii U. That hit 60 frames per second for a good reason because smoothness and driving, they honestly go together really well. And that's not me being you know, kind of shitty trying to push people's buttons. Uh, not that I would ever do something like that, but um, it does matter when it comes to a driving game, I feel. There are some 30 frames per second driving games that are fine, but 60 will get you to that next level just if you know your mechanics are solid. So uh, it's 30 frames per second. I would say that the tracks themselves, the courses, are really nice to drive on. I love their track design. I love the environments that you're are in. They, are they modeled after real courses, or are they all original? I think they're original. Okay, uh, cool. Just these are areas, well, whatever. Um, they do a weird thing with whether or not you should break or hit the gas in your turns or do nothing by having flags on the side of the road be a certain color. Okay, so, so they're trying to steal flags, that. You're like, oh, I need to slow down, but it's not a driving line. So they're trying to steal that Forza thing without stealing an actual driving line. Yeah. Um, see, I, I, I. I don't really use a driving line in Forza. I always use when I have to brake, so I'm okay with anything that just tells me I have to brake. Um, Horizon, it's hard because of so, so, so much open space, so that driving line does help there. Um, but I remember in Gran Turismo 4, they just had um, a little reticle that was right next to your extra, your, your current gear that just said, 
slow down and drop it into this gear to be able to take this turn, and I was okay with that. But I think the more complicated the course is getting and like an open world, that driving line does help out. But I think I would be fine with just like this thing tells me to slow down. I can slow down and follow the line that I need to follow. Weird thing. Not every turn has these flags. Oh, yeah. Very so weird. Because so, 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 as soon as I relied on it, yeah, it was gone, and I was like, "Whoa! Why didn't someone? Oh, did I just take that corner bad? Like you just you on? just zoom right through. You don't even see the corner. <laughs> it's got a ton of content, but what kind of bothers me is that a ton more content is locked behind paywalls. Now, I had the disc version, you know, I rented it. Um, I had no idea there was that much DLC available that you have to buy. It's kind of surprising. Um, just, you know. Is it tracks or cars or both? I believe it's tracks and cars. So, okay. so they had they have the free to play model that they kept for when it was free to play, but then they just charged people for right, it. I hope not. And they just kept and just kept the free to play model in there, right? Yeah, uh, I sure hope that that's that's scary. <laughs> like that's scary that that's a kind of like well maybe that is what they did. Do you know how much it was? The game itself? Yeah, fifty nine ninety nine. Oh, fuck me. Really? Sure. That's what it launched at, I believe. Sony's uh, been doing really shitty with their driving games recently, huh? They just can't really compare. Like, I mean, without Gran Turismo out. Um, yeah, normally even, it's 59 even, even, even the last Gran Turismo, hey, look, we have these 80 very nice cars, and then we got these ones that just look like a Pinewood Derby car that just goes zooming past you because we couldn't do the resolution for it, you know? Yeah. Either way, Drive Club, nice attempt. Um, boy, am I glad they delayed it like almost a whole year because who knows how that would have been without an extra almost year of polish. Because like, that was supposed to be you know, close to launch that it came out. And mm. That did not happen. Um, so it's a nice attempt. Um, there's just too many things wrong with it. you know. And like I said, the actual driving itself just isn't that great. Um, it's got some interesting social options. They need to work on integrating that better. Not that I'm an expert on how these things work. All I know is that with Forza Horizon 2, I didn't even have to try. Everything I wanted was there, and that was great. Uh, Drive Club it is not so. You have to navigate menus. You have to seek things out. You have to... Uh, it kind of feels like a waste of time to select a race so that you can send a challenge, and then you do the race to send the challenge. Like, I want to accomplish two things at once. I want to go through the normal progression and send the challenges at the same time as I do them. Because why not? It makes sense, right? Uh, they have little challenges inside of the tracks themselves. It's like, oh, it's a cornering challenge. From this point to the next point, you have to stay on the driving line to get points. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a drift challenge. Those are not fun, by the way. Drift challenges suck. Drifting sucks. If you love drifting cars, fuck you. Hate that shit. Um, you know, just little things like that. Keep your top speed higher than the average here. Uh, but it's not... I hate to just say, like, it's not as good as Horizon 2, but Horizon 2 really was a exceptional thing. Um, so, I don't know. Drive Club, kind of shitty. Uh, it's added a bunch of content, but there's a lot that you got to pay for. Uh, if you've only got a PS4, you really don't have that many options unless you like Need for Speed. So, uh, feel free to give it a try if you're dying for it. But I'd, I'd love to say wait for the free one, but, uh, yep. I don't think that's coming. I don't think it will either. Um, yeah. Until the game is eleven dollars used, <laughs> and at that point, why don't you just get the used eleven dollar game? So, sure. Uh, okay, that's Drive Club. Uh, looks like you've been playing some more Infamous Second Son. I have. Uh, that's a fun game. It's but it feels really last gen, like hmm. really last gen. I'm I'm not. It feels. How so? Uh, graphically. Graphically, it looks like garbage okay. half the time. Some of the time, it looks great, and um, it does a real good job of like conveying a, kind of a sense of place that Seattle is. Um, mm -hmm. I like that. Uh, but, you know, I, I just... It feels like they were going to make it for the PS3, and then early on was like, well, we'll force it to go on the PS4 and add a few things to justify that. It just does not seem that crazy. feels kind of like a... Neutral jump, you know. It didn't actually go in any direction, forwards or backwards. Um, although I'm sure it couldn't be done on the PS3 for some reason, whatever. Uh, you know, it just it feels decidedly last gen. It's it is fun though because it is a fun game. Infamous is always fun unless you're playing the first one, which is not fun. Uh, the second one was great. I loved the second Infamous. <laughs> uh, 
and this one's I good. Like the first one, okay. Yeah, the this one's good. Um, yeah, but, you know, it. I'd like to see what they do with a real proper next gen. Focus. I'm trying to remember if this was um, a launch game. I, I feel no, like it was it, not. I feel like it came out pretty soon after launch, though. It was. Uh, Within the uh, launch window, I think it was the I six was months. Second, second sum was like March, I think. Yeah, it was. It was yeah. the middle of the year. Yeah. Okay. And well, yeah. I'm and, excited for it, but uh, with time, I started to lose my excitement for it, and now I finally got to play it. And like I said, it's nice. I like it. I have fun with it, but it does feel last gen, which is not necessarily the worst knock you can have on it. But I was expecting something a little prettier and a little crazier, and I did not get that. Not a mm. big deal. Yeah, I am not impressed with this this new generation yet. Not impressed by it. Well, you know, we're doing HD remasters of everything to bolster sales, and people are happy to buy their old games twice. I mean, look at me. I was about to say, that's the yeah pot calling the kettle black that's right there. The, the, the quintuple dip on the Street Fighter Cross Tekken, everybody. I'm, I'm pretty sure that when this came out in March, it was, uh, it was pretty much the only game... On my PS4, that I was like, yes, okay, great. I want um, to be concrete man. I want, I want to, to be, be concrete neon, man. neon dude. Um, I, I don't think there were a lot of games uh, out on PS4 that I was dying for um, when this came out. So I, I have real fond memories of it, but I don't know if it would hold up if I put it back in and played more of it. Um, well, like I said, all those first. all those best of lists that I see. Best game on PS4, all the list I see is Last of Us Remastered. It's like, oh, come on. And you know, I still haven't even tried that, even though yeah. it came with mine. Um, I did have a friend play through the PT demo. The okay. Uh, How was that? Scared, scared the living shit out of her. It was really good. So she looked like nice. a, a Mac user, then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Bring it I'm still, back. I'm, I'm still dying to get Blue over here to play it. Because it needs to happen, but it just has not happened yet. That has an expiration date on it, I believe. Uh, I saw, I saw I, pictures and tweets that say that it expires in like 200 days or something like that. Don't tell me wow. shit. Yeah. So you're lucky you downloaded it when you did, because it's off the store now. So you're lucky you bought a PS4 when you did. Yeah, you can't re-download it. Uh, yeah, but I think files that say it ex has an expiration date on it. Which you that know what? Suck. It was. It's a free game. They can let it expire whenever the hell they want. Twelve thirteen of twenty fifteen, but I don't know if it's for real. Hmm. So I don't know. It's like Y two K all over again. Who knows if it's going to? Apparently, gonna I can check and see what it is. If it even we should do, we should play PT all night to keep the servers on. Oh, it's like Halo Two on the yeah. Xbox, right? Yeah. Let's keep um, it alive for like a month or two, right? Oh, Henry, false alarm. The uh, expiration is because of someone's PS Plus renewal. And they ah, okay. It, so. I'm just like because I just saw actually expire, which is great. I just saw a tweet that was brief. So yeah, but if you if you lose your if you don't re renew your PS Plus subscription, plus. do you lose it then? No, because it's I, not a plus yeah. thing. So. Right, it's on yeah, your hard drive. It's... Yeah, I just thought that yeah, was yeah, weird. So it's like it's... It'll be fine. I, it was a free game, so they can, they can go wherever they want. I think I deleted it. I can't remember. How could you delete yeah, that? Masterpiece? The worst. Sonny's because I don't like scary. Because I don't like scary games. I'm Sonny's almost. best game that he didn't play this year, yeah. or as <laughs> it's gonna be. Game of the year, my friend. Game um, the year. do we have questions somewhere that I'm not sure? Seeing? Sure, we've got questions. You ready for a question? <laughs> I like these I questions. And we have a couple boring. comments, like New Age Reds agrees with my Super Castlevania, and he also wants me to start another Gaming 101 for an N64 or GameCube game, which I'm never going to do. Um, what? So there's that. Fuck, I'm not buying no fucking 64. What year oh. is this? Do I like okay, Mario? Do I like Mario? Oh, I'm just Mario. Just it. uh, it's not worth it. You, you yeah. would, so you would do another gaming 101. No, probably not. Oh, motherfucker! I gotta teach math all the time. All right, so we have a uh, question from Rich Grisham that says, "What's your anticipation level for E3 now that it's next month?" Uh, my oh, response crap. is, "It's next month." 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it was at zero. Uh, I guess it's still at zero. They show us so much bullshit these. I just don't know. <laughs> I mean, the show the show used to be great because it used to highlight games that are coming out this year, and it, it hopefully it, it's going to change as the developers get used to the new actual consoles. But it's like every E3 is like. Guess what? These games are coming out sometime in the near future. We try to get them out in December. Nope, sorry, we can't actually do that. They're going to get pushed back, and it's just... <sighs> yeah, I have zero hype for E3. Zero hype. I'll be it's cool, good. I'll be cool. like, new games announced. Okay, yeah, so this I'll game might get canceled. Like, this, game, this game might get canceled at some time. That's cool, but that's, that's you know, it's, it's not that exciting anymore. Well... As we were talking about it, I checked Facebook to see if we had gotten some questions. And my top story is uh, developer to reveal Fallout 4 release date and demo to E3 conference, report says. That tells me nothing. There's going to be a Fallout 4. Yeah, no shit there was going to be a fucking Fallout 4. They're gonna, I could they're gonna be make a, really hyped for they're, Fallout. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna make, re, make a release date. Oh, what's it going to be? Holiday season 2006. I don't care. Roll Did those dice. I'm, I'm kind of hyped. What? Did you play New Vegas? A little. Like, How I can you be hyped for a new Fallout if you didn't even finish the <laughs> He last almost one. flipped his desk. Did you see that shit? It's he the best Fallout desk. game of them all. No, no. Three Actually, was... Fallout, Fallout 2 was the best Fallout game of them okay. all. Right? We've all got a different Fallout game that we like. The quest, so so the only thing that I would be remotely interested in You're from, a very Fallout, cute. from a Fallout... You're making six, you mad. From a Fallout 6 announcement, the only thing... Be remotely interested. What city or area is it going to be in? And that's it. The date is going to be somewhere off in the fucking future. Who cares? Um, it's. I just want to know. Do not play is it years. is it in the California Republic? Is it in D.C.? Are they going to Boston? Are they going to go back to Las Boston Vegas? Boston would be cool. You know the where are they going to have it? Are they going to have it in Texas? Right, Texas. Everybody Texas big old, big old flags. You get customizable belt buckle pit boys. You know. It might happen. Every time you have to go to the menu screen, you look down at your dick, it's going to be perfect. <laughs> now you got me hyped. Yeah, now uh, I got you hyped. <laughs> right, but it's you just know, like... I'm, I'm thinking back to like an older E3, I think it was like 2007, uh, where they showed Fallout 3. That got me really excited. Yeah, but that was like out of nowhere. Like, nobody was expecting them to revive the Fallout series. Nobody. So that... Like these products that they have, people are like, oh, oh, Elder Scrolls games, and people are like, oh yeah, Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas. It's like it's inevitable that there's going to be another Elder Scrolls game at some point. There's going to be another Fallout after this one. It's just one of those things that's going to happen. At least on the plus side is that when they build the engine for the new console, hopefully we get another one or two iterations off of the same actual engine like they did with Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. That way we can keep getting some some more games in those styles. But, like, the only game that actually surprised me was, like, Mortal Kombat 10. That came out of nowhere to me. It's just like, hey, guess what? Mortal Kombat 10 is coming out in three months. That's the type of surprises I want. Not like this this two- to three-year wait for an actual game. You know, it's like, oh, guess what? We're, we've been making Mortal Kombat 10 the whole time. And it's out in three months. You know, that's cool. Um, and those games that, that actually do that, I would be hyped and excited for, man. But the other ones, just like, yeah, have holiday season. 2016. Even the ones that are even, or even the ones that are even more ominous coming soon. Oh! Such a hater. Uh, Speaking of haters, I mean, HP, how can you not have played New Vegas? You love, <laughs> you love great stories. You love great stories. You love wandering aimless, not really aimlessly, but like just getting stuck. I love wandering aimlessly. Like, I love wandering I aimlessly so a death stalker just rips my what face What do I need off. to do? What do I need to do to get you to play this? Like, honest to goodness, what would I need to do besides create more hours in your day? Because that's a bullshit thing. Like, okay. do you want it on the PC? Get out, I'll buy I it have it on the PC. I tried okay. to play it on the stream, and it froze my computer. Well, fuck the stream. Yeah, I remember that. Remember. Yeah, remember? I was super hyped to play it's because, it on the It's stream. because Fisher-Price made your PC, all right? That's why. No, it's because Fisher-Price made New Vegas. Obsidian's nice. QA is not so good. Um, no, Did you I, get all the DLC with it? I don't remember. All right. I'll, I'll look. 
Um, it's season of Breakers PC, oh, so it doesn't matter how much DLC he got with it. It it's is not going to be greatest played. games. Ever. It's like it's like Blood Dragon. Never that's not gonna, that's never going to be played. <sighs> I'm never going to play Blood Dragon. Never going to be played. He bought Fuck it on the PC, game. and then he bought it on Steam, and then whatever fucking you play didn't register it. Never going to play it. You know? I'm so yeah. Fuck that this. game. So um. Bad. So I'm. <sighs> Honest, honestly, the more I think about E3, the more interested I become. Because uh, we'll see Star Wars Battlefront. We'll see Arkham Knight. We'll see... You're trying to say, like, all this marketing is actually going to do its job and yeah. get you excited for the but marketing. But it's like, <laughs> well, it's like I, mean, I, don't, I don't have to have a conference to get me excited about those games because those games have already been announced. So it's just like, oh, guess what? Here's this I little... I want to see gameplay. Oh, well, here's the fucking... Problem. You're going to you're gonna buy those games regardless of what the fuck it looks like, okay? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to buy Arkham Knight. Angry. Why are you yelling no at me? Because I'm mad. Game? Why are you... Well, I understand why you're mad at me. Why are you mad at me, Doc? I'm not because, mad at you. Because, motherfucker, you don't need no gameplay to know you want to buy that game. I do I need remember, gameplay. I don't remember any S- You're not seeing gameplay, you goddamn... You're not seeing it. I You're just seeing remember. scripted events. There's nothing going on around the field of view because nothing exists. They build this tiny little thing and they say, oh, it's in-game footage, but in reality, it doesn't have the rest of the level. It doesn't have this. Things get scaled back and it's a horrible betrayal saying that you're going to get this beautiful thing when it's just a scripted bullshit thing load of trash. Like, remember Killzone Shadowfall? That, supposedly in-game, was garbage. It was trash. All right, now, Sonny, Fuck think dude. back, early 90s, SNES era. Do you remember ever seeing gameplay for any of those games that you actually go out and buy? You just fucking look at a picture on the back of the box. You're like, this game... <laughs> those were good times. Yeah, we were all Dope. ignorant assholes in the 90s. Let's, 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 let's scoop this shit out, you know? Let's, let's, let's scoop this thing out. The only game I remember watching gameplay for was when I pre-ordered Donkey Kong Country, and I already pre-ordered it. They sent me a VHS tape for that shit. That's the only game I actually saw a fucking video for. You do not need gameplay to You don't know. Because you already you you're gameplay. already buying the Batman game. You are already I know buying, buying the Batman game. Why, why would you buy, I might buy Battlefront? I, I know you're buying those games. games. Like they're locking so much shit behind. Yeah, it. using power. Yeah, I want to. Sure. So I want to see what I'm getting. On a shitty Batman game because fuck Batman. Batman is garbage and trash. Superman I mean, would kill his I'm ass. Not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. True. I'm not. All I'm this not, is true. I'm not downplaying the fact that you want to see gameplay, and I understand it, but you do not need to see the gameplay to decide to make a purchase, because I know for those oh. games you already made a purchase. If only those games that have not been announced trivia. yet, and they're actually being unveiled at E3, the gameplay would be pinnacle. It would be important to actually see. But it's like, you already know you're buying this game. And I can yell at you any fucking time I want. <laughs> well, the problem, is, the problem is, if you want to see gameplay, you're not really seeing actual gameplay in any of this. Like, uh, Uncharted 4, ooh, it's, it's gameplay. You can't get a feel for gameplay by having somebody else play it. Uh, you can only get a feel for what spectacle they want to show you. You can only get motion sickness. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you just, it's not... Uh, and maybe it's just me, but that stuff is just not effective for me. Like these in-game playthroughs, and especially God, I could go. Like I'd be really appreciative if this world, I would not get another ten or fifteen minute Call of Duty single player walkthrough. Like please stop with these. I mean, odds are what's going to happen is I'm going to be home when they're doing the keynotes for all those consoles, and like, and then there's going to be like a fifteen minute Dance Central thing. Rock Band's probably going to get a good like twenty minute block. That's true. You know, it's probably going to get a good 20-minute block on that. Um, and it's just, if they were just like, game, 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 here's a new game, here's a new game, here's a new game, here's a new game, and they just kind of gave me a synopsis of what's going to be out there, I would be happy. But it's like, I have to sit through like two hours of watching something for like a five-minute nugget of, oh, that's something I had no idea about, that looks interesting, that was worth it. But like all the other shit, like Sonny says, oh, well, we were able to show Call of Duty for the first time at our keynote for 15 minutes because we paid a shit ton of money, even though it's available on every other console. But we were able to do it for the Call of Duty uh, exclusive. Very tired. You know? Very tired of that. And there's going to be, gonna there's gonna be a good 15... 15 They're going to show a boat. 
all that shit. And then a, an American landmark yeah. gets destroyed. There's going to be a good 15 minutes for um for Halo, Halo 5, right? Good 15 minutes for Halo 5. You know, sure. I want to call this right now. We're going to see Mount Rushmore get blown up this year. <laughs> we haven't seen that happen yet. Yeah, Surely but nobody gives a fuck. Movie. Nobody gives a fuck about it because it's in the Dakotas. Yeah, but I, I just I get the feeling that they're going to tap Mount Rushmore this time. Yeah, that's what you think. And then, and, then, and, then, and then there's going to be a left for mummies, right? You There'll know? be like a gigantic face that falls past the player and goes, oh. I would play this shit out of left for money, mummies. <laughs> left for mummies all day long. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, regarding mummies, uh, did y'all see that Mortal Kombat DLC? You know, Jason's in it now, which is cool. Uh, he he is, looks like the cheapest character in the world because he has like a quick low into overhead combo. Uh, so it's really bad. Sweet. Just uh, like low overhead. There's a there's a mummy skin for Ermac. Oh, nice. Yes, that's mummy awesome. Cool. Can't you play as an actual mummy and killer? Isn't there a mummy in that? Yes, there's Conra who is a mummy. Um, yeah. There's they've added a bunch of really cool characters. Season two is worth checking out. Like it's pretty cool. You know, I think I'm, I'm, so. What, what other shit? There, so Microsoft is going to show off the Hololens. Um, oh yeah, I'm actually, oh, yeah so, we're so, going to get that. Looks, looks, looks interesting. I think I would be more interested in augmented reality than virtual reality. Um, in the actual purview of a of of what they have to offer right now. Um, but uh, yeah, then there's going to be Morpheus. Is it still called Morpheus? Right. I think. I think so. Still I don't Project think this Morpheus. is a year, though. Like, I don't know. I don't they'll still, they'll still show it or mention it or something. Um, I, I just want us to get to the point where we can have actual Yu-Gi-Oh! episodes happen in real life. Man, we hey, already have cards. Hollow Lens can make that happen. Come, you, you that, I want the that, cards man. to come to life. You had that with Eye of Judgment for the PS3. Do you oh, well, yeah, I want that's that right. more and more and better, and I want more of it. I want it now. The and, problem with that is that people. Can I want it. it right now. You can print your own cards and do it. That's the hard part. Like unless they've got an NFC chip, like Amiibos do, I can't see any way of making that work without being. Able to what do you this. think? Somebody's gonna cheat with their their blue eyes, red the sort of black red eyes, black dragon that's made out <laughs> of. Red eyes, black dragon is fucking, not as good as a fucking sheet of paper like this here. Uh, not as good as the blue eyes white dragon. We all know this. Doc, here's, there's no here's reason. My, here's my dragon. <laughs> and then you win the game. Doc, there's no reason to summon a red eyes black dragon. I don't fuck it. I never play no shit from Yu Gi Oh, man. I can't play no Yu Gi Oh. It's only one sacrifice for it. Motherfucker, I just know they got some dragons with some eyes in it. Uh, <laughs> and then some motherfucker's like, ha ha. You fell apart, and then that's all that happened. That's all I remember, man. Dragons are important. I think we're done with this episode after that. Ethan. Okay. Look, you don't want to steal another question from a different podcast. We don't need to. Awesome. Hey, I got a question for you guys. How many Vita games do you think are going to be mentioned? I'd oh shit! Three. Cal Launcher is negative be off one. Cal Launcher owns like every single Vita game that's ever come he out. Does, in the except, except for special editions. Well, I think terrible. he literally might have the largest collection of Vita games. In the country, because I think it's I think this bad. weekend he tweeted out like this completes my Vita collection, except for special edition dupes of games that he already has. What's bad about that is that there are legitimate pedo games on the Vita, so now he's on a list because he's purchased them. <laughs> there is no list. It's not like I'm keeping a list for that. I mean, the FBI have so many other things to be important for, you know, to be like terrorist lists. They're not gonna be like, yep, this motherfucker <laughs> went to a rent. Fox and game on the list. If you are beating and stripping 13-year-olds, I think that... Honestly, I think that the ratings commission has got the biggest problem. I'm on the list! Well, it's... it's it's. That wasn't good. That was not a good joke. It's, Akiva, it's, no, it's, it's Akiva's oh, strip! Yeah, but it's because even though they look like 13-year-olds and they act like 13-year-olds, the game always says these people are of age. Doc, I'm sorry. They don't. They, they don't? I, they I don't even do you, that anymore? They, they used to do that shit. That's I know. What they, that's, that's how they used to get away with it. ESRB you know? has failed us. They are rating these for mature because of uh, adult themes, which, ironically, <laughs> no adults in that. Yeah. But there are children. Like They gotta the get on like, this whole, we gotta get on this Peggy system that I see so much on them YouTube videos. Yeah. Peggy 18. I don't even know Peggy stuff out. 
But uh, as much as I want to say you should take a look online and see what I'm talking about, you totally shouldn't because that'll get you on the list. But you, you have should to... Google typical Mac user. There, there is okay. there is a game out there called okay, so... Girls where you beat them. It's horrible. And it's okay, like... so I'm gonna get on my proxy server to look at images of these games so I don't get, get on the dark list, web. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, don't even just do that. Just well, like... so, so, Sonny, you're already on a list. So just after this call, you're already on a list, Sonny. So just screen like, share. Just, yeah, just, yeah, just, yeah, just, just, yeah, screen, just screen share. share it to us after the call. That way this thing doesn't get taken down. Uh, <laughs> it's horrible. Perfect. The Vita, the Vita has found its own niche, and it's terrifying. Like I I don't know why it's it's okay for these companies to release these games. Like I don't. I honestly don't understand why that's happening. If you had well, any type of magazine with that in it, you would get it confiscated. It's, it's, it's a cultural thing because those are socially acceptable in Japan to some extent as, like, just these weird... Terrible. You know, games. And then, for some reason... No one stopped They get ported over checking a box. Oh, it's okay in Japan? Sure. Boom. Done. Terrible. I think that the SRB has honestly failed us. Because when I go to the store on my Vita and I look at new releases, I go, oh, what's this? I have to really look at the screenshots and make sure because they don't overtly say it. I just I just assume that like this anything in the, anything in like the RPG category that I have not noticed before and never heard about, they're pedophiles. That's probably a reason. Just yeah. guarantee it. Like it really sucks because I would honestly feel really uncomfortable having a kid with a Vita. Knowing that they can get into that kind of shit, like that's that's horrible. Ugh. But they're thousand year old demons. They're actually old. Now, now, would you would you also flip the script the other way and say the ESRB has failed us for I don't know having these games where you commit mass genocide against people? Just keep no, because that's context. Loads loads of people over and over again. That's context. Say you're playing Call of Duty or you're playing Mortal Kombat. Those people have entered an agreement, so to speak, that they're going to kill each other. There's no place for like child abuse, like sexual abuse to a child, and any kind of abuse. Oh, like I this. agree with I agree with that too. But I like, think the context just alone is enough. Like honestly, you know, oh, we've got our own problems because we do glorify violence quite a bit, but that's totally different universes than this to me. And I, I can't even compare the two. Can't even, not even, not even close. And I don't think you guys could either. Like I. I'm oh sure. no, I, I I agree. There's yeah, a certain, not, there's not a unless we're playing devil's of advocate. Yeah, there's a certain circle. There's, circuit, there's circuit. no need to play yeah. devil's advocate. I mean, that kind of shit is disgusting. And don't get me wrong. I don't want to cut people open. You know, I don't want to, uh, you know, reenact any Mortal Kombat. Never, 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 never doing that Casey Cage fatality ever again. You know, <sighs> Jesus. Or X Factor is an X Factor. Yeah, yeah, it's yes, the X Factor. Yeah. X Ray. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Oh, that's for X Ray. Sorry, Marvel. It's always yeah, in that. No, X Factor. I want to. I want. <sighs> I'm just really right. disappointed at ESRB that somehow this shit comes out and no one's managed to successfully you know, freak out about it and get. Well, anyone see, well, see, one one of the problems with how they present games to the ESRB is that they give a synopsis of all the bad things that are in there that some people can have a problem with, and then they they just show like select like the developers or the publishers actually just give selected footage. So they can just, like, leave all that shit out if they actually want to, and unless the ESRB says, wait a minute, let's dig a little bit deeper into this actual game and see what's what's happening and say, well, we're going to wait to actually pass, pass this until we see more, um, then it just goes through. And no one seems through. to challenge it because most of the people that buy them are those just horrible people. <sighs> anyway. So, so are you going to make, like, a Mothers Against Pedo Games Honestly, map, map where is it? Because it's, it's, <laughs> it's letting people down. It needs to be there because I am of the mind that even though a lot of people are like, oh, but it's a victimless crime, they're all drawn, I think that that still indulges people in these incredibly unhealthy things. And I know, who am I to judge? It doesn't matter. Consent is really important. And when you have young children, and even if it is in a no, video game or even a visual novel, you can't be building some type of... Uh, kind of like culture around that, and like these games conditioning people that it's okay to beat these children. You know, <laughs> it's okay to strip them. Like, no, no, I'm done. Like I said, I mean, even though they are different things, it's still there's still Mortal Kombat. There's still these other violent games, and 
I don't think there's going to be any traction to get rid of those style of games, um, those pedo style of games, because it's probably the same people that are against those games and the same people against the violent games. And that's one thing that is... self-censor. Like Skyrim, you're That's one thing that's your disdain, you know? What was that? Uh, Skyrim, you're not killing children. Uh, Fallout, you're not shooting children in the head, you know? still shooting people, though. Yeah, but it's all about context and... I think yeah, but I mean, I mean, who, you're still fucking killing somebody, Sonny. Well, yeah, but no, and you're and you're right now saying it's okay to kill a, a grown ass man in the world that they've created. Yes, but not in not the a kid. Of that world, yes. I don't think that there's a single justifiable world where the context would be okay to do something to a child. That's fine. oh, I I agree like, as well. I, it's I, I still, know you do. I'm, I'm it's just, still it's still one of those things where it's just like, well. It's it's hard to justify, and like I completely agree, these games should not exist. But it's one of those things that it's hard to get traction when you're like, well, this game that's doing a bad thing can't exist, but this game that's doing a bad thing is perfectly fine, and that's that's hard to be able to get that traction because somebody would just be like fucking hypocrite and then just leave it out there. How do you feel about all this HP? I think you're. Both preaching to the choir. Yeah, basically. I mean, we both agree on the fact that those games it's shouldn't wrong, exist. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, it's, uh, I don't know what I don't know what we can do about it in this country except basically cap, you know, capitalism. Like, if as so long as we don't buy those games, they won't have a market here. I think we need to kill them. See, but but the problem okay. is, is that the problem is is that they have a market somewhere else. And then they cheaply port them, so however small the actual niche crowd is over here, they can still turn a profit. It's not like a AAA style game where they have to sell like X amount of copies. It's already popular overseas somewhere where it's a little bit more culturally acceptable to have this style of thing because they know people aren't going to even do that because it's a cultural niche. I don't know. It's, it's fucking weird um, over there in terms of just the sheer differences between mentalities and culture. Uh, but yeah, so they just cheaply poured it over and if a thousand people actually buy the games, then they're, they'll keep doing it in terms of those small actual quantities. Uh, I think the the, what the biggest problem is they're, they're also available for digital distribution. If they were only available for hard copy, I don't think it would it wouldn't be all that problem because then you really have to put yourself out there and be like, yes, I really want this, as opposed to what Sonny says where a kid could be playing it and then all of a sudden just like, well, this looks interesting, download it, and then starts playing it. I mean, don't get me wrong, they are rated M, but I honestly think that they should be uh, not there. <laughs> not there at all. I don't think it should be or there. There is a adult-only tag for the ESRB. Yeah, there is an AO but even tag. That, I don't think that justifies it existing. Like, and don't get me wrong, like censorship uh, gets into a real slippery slope. I honestly don't think these things should exist. But I mean, for for like AO tags, that's like some real serious need to have ID, need to make sure so it does stay out of those young incorrigible minds that you were mentioning. Well, and on top of that, like even then, that, I still feel like that needs to stay out of grown people's hands as well. Like, oh yeah, I know <laughs> what you're actually saying, but <laughs> ah, anyway. yeah, people are gonna say you're impeding their First Amendment rights to play pedo games, right? So it's just like so, yeah, it's, I, it's I gonna get I stung. Am. But we can yeah. prevent children from actually playing them. So uh, and it's just the culture that surrounds it and giving people that outlet. Uh, some people will say, oh well, you know this actually is good because it keeps them from finding children. And you're like, well, not necessarily. And show me the studies for everything because, I don't know, there's a defense force for everything. Anyway. Well, I'm sure studies for that. You just don't want to look at them. So I'm afraid to Google things. Yeah, I would be too <laughs> after just like typical Mac user. Last time no. I image search anything. Don't, don't do that. I told right, you. Right, yeah. Um, that's the show? Yeah, yeah, that's the show. Uh, before, before we go, let's, let's talk a little bit about video games that we're going to be playing that we're excited to play for next week. Oh, How's God. that? Um, nothing's coming out for <laughs> me <laughs> next so week. Unusual. Nothing's coming out for me next week. I think Axiom just... Verge comes out next Friday. Awesome. So, and then, I think, I think... 
the yeah, yeah, Friday after next. Um, and, then, and then The Witcher comes out not this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday, I want to say. The Winter. The Winter comes out on the 19th. Mm-hmm. Which I don't know why I want to play, because it does chlor... I procure sessions with women. Um, so maybe I won't play it. Uh, we've got Project Cars coming out next week, and far, that's pretty much it. What the but, fuck was Project Cars? Uh, that's a super it's a driving game. race game. Like, apparently it's a big deal. <laughs> Hmm. It's a drivey game. It came out on the PC as well. I believe it's actually. Um, uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much it for next week. If you if you are someone who owns a PS4, the 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 PlayStation Network games, uh, not only do you get two PS4 games, but I think there are like three cross buy games, so you can get some. It's either four or five games this month for free on. Your PS4. One of them is oh, Ether One. <laughs> Don't oh, be a dumbass. Dumb. You know the deal. Um, <laughs> Ether One is one of them. It's a first-person, uh, like memory, kind of exploration thing. Uh, there's Hohokam. There's the Unfinished Swan, which I'm really interested in playing. Um, and then what there's Unfinished Swan. Man, Swan. I played Unfinished Swan back on PS3. That game. I don't know. Some people really loved it because it's artsy, and some people really. I like it. It, has, it has Swan in the title. It has to be artsy by <laughs> default. It's like you're not allowed to put that in a title unless you are artsy. Well, um, what's what's, what's free on the bone? I think Castle Storm this month is free on the bone. Yes. Right. Yes. Castle Storm, which I did not like enough to play more than ten minutes of, did not enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, oh, Guacamelee is the other. Oh, and Race the Sun. Race the Sun is another one that you can get. Yeah, Yeah. Race Race the Sun's a fun fun game. I play it on PC. Um, This kind of just cool little two-minute game you can play. um, So I look forward to finishing up uh, the old blood and then kind of chugging along with those PlayStation Plus games. Yeah, I think uh, I'm going to change a little bit on how I play games, and I'm going to actually finish things instead of just kind of abandoning That's what I, I want to actually do, but then it's then we're doing this, and then new games come out, but it's a really good time to either, one, finish games, or two, Sonny, we can hop back in an MMO. Yeah! I don't know what you're thinking about. I don't fucking care, man. We can make it rain in, like, Ark... What was the name? Arc Age? Arc Age? Right in that Korean MMO if we want. Well, Elder Scrolls Online comes out in June for consoles. Oh, that's, that's right. Um, I own it on PC, so I don't... Uh, it's um, pay to play. Like, you pay... You buy... God, what is it? Buy to play? Is what oh, it's, it's the... Um, it's the um, 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 no subscription fee, basically. Yeah, it's the... What, what the hell is it? What the hell game did that? Uh, golly. Steam, Steam MMORPG, there's two... Guild Wars, too. Guild Wars. Guild Wars as well. Yeah. There's Guild Wars, actually. Yeah. I think they Maybe call it... I'll play uh, New Vegas. Please, because, my God, it's... That means you would have to hook up your 360 again. <laughs> it's no, it's hooked up in the bedroom. It's got a PC. Oh, or you could do that. It's not going to work on PC. It's not going to work on my PC. We went over this. You sure yeah. it wasn't just because you had... Um, I was streaming. streaming? Yeah, because Five Nights at Freddy's didn't work for me uh, when I was streaming initially, and eventually I got it. All right, I will give it a shot that for you. That means you have to download all of the gigabytes again. That's oh, right. God damn it. Just, oh. put the, just put the disc in your console. <laughs> uh, all right. That's been the Games Only Podcast. Hey, that's a better note to end on. Uh, that's been the Games Only Podcast. Better than episode. us like, being really bummed out. And like, Man, right, yes. The world fucking yeah. sucks. We, can always go we back can't to... do anything about these crazy people. Uh, listen listen uh, to some soundtracks. How about that? Oh, yeah. Uh, I actually was listening to some of the soundtracks while Doc was mentioning, um, and I'm I'm interested in going back, um, especially Shin Megami. Shimagami, that was... I got really into the one song. They, they got was, some cool tunes. Uh, yeah. Oh, hey, what am I doing? That's been the Games Only Podcast, episode 183. I've well, been your host this evening. Fave 5 next week. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, that's right. I think I, think I want to say, instead of just restricting to Sonny's favorite uh, top five um, Final Fantasy games, I want to say Sonny's favorite uh, top five Japanese RPGs. Okay. Okay. I will mark it on the thingy. 
Episode 183, I've been your host at HP1703. With me, my good friends, Dr. Gumar. Hey, hey, hey. I mean, bye, bye, bye. <laughs> and Sunflower. Turtle Lou. And we will talk at you next week. Uh, who knows what day it will be? Yay! Surprises! Yep, yeah, it'd probably be like a, a weekday. Yeah, yep. Yeah, Tuesday.